and hopefully the crowd, everyone settled in. Um, welcome, it's really nice to see everyone in person again. Uh, it's been a couple of years, um, you found your way. My name is Kayla Mahoney, I'm the director at the Washington Conservation Guild, um, and I'll be your host for this room that we are facing <laughs> monumental task. Um, we've got two talks in this room, and then you can jet over to another room uh, because our third talk has been canceled, but may come up later in the year, so look out for an announcement for that. Um, and yes, this, this room is facing monumental task. I will introduce Christine, who's going to uh, definitely talk about a monumental task. Um, she's a museum specialist and collections caretaker at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian. She received her MA in Museum Studies from George Washington University and a BA in Archaeology from Boston University. Christine has over 10 years of experience working with Native and Indigenous communities in the Western Hemisphere. She has a wealth of knowledge in IPM, environmental monitoring, object packing, shipping, housing, and community engagement. Christine's passionate about working directly with communities supporting visiting artists and stewarding the collections for generations to come. All right, so please welcome Christine while I switch over to Good evening. Uh, so yes, I work at the National Museum of the American Indian, and we recently have had to respond to a web and closed moth infestation. Here's how we did it. That didn't work. Okay, so the National Museum of the American Indian has battled with collections pests for decades and is currently responding to one of the worst webbing closed moth infestations at the collections housing in Suitland, Maryland. Of the over 826,000 catalog numbers, more than 75% is comprised of organic material. These items are housed in one large and open space across three floors, essentially creating a wide open buffet for pests to enjoy. Museum Pest did just that. Majority of the staff were out of the building since March 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Cabinets went unopened, aisles went untraveled, and dust bunnies undisturbed, creating the ideal environment for pests to thrive. We are no strangers to webbing clothes moths. In 2008, we suffered our first documented major webbing clothes moth infestation that originated in the Arctic collections and spread into Plains community collections. A comprehensive IPM policy and plan was implemented and has been rigorously followed since then. NMAI deploys over 100 pheromone traps in the collections housing area to monitor for a web and closed moth presence. Though routine trap checks slowed down when staff weren't on site full time, they were a key identifier in pointing out this moth infestation. No. Maybe there's a red dot. That probably means yes. <laughs> a pest infestation is a collections emergency, but they happen so often that collection stewards forget to treat them as such. With the establishment of price, preparedness, and response of collections emergencies at Smithsonian, staff are now trained in implementing systems for emergency response. So in July of 2022, over two years into a pandemic, when staff discovered an infestation directly affecting 10,000 objects and potentially affecting 50,000 collection items, we had the opportunity to put this training into action. Since then, NMAI staff are working within the framework of a phased collections emergency response to eliminate the presence of web and closed moths and save the collection. Staff involved in the response operate under the incident command system and follow IARMS, inspect, assess, respond, monitor, and salvage. This framework is an example of how to adapt a general emergency response plan 
for a pest related collections emergency. Many of you may be familiar with this hierarchy of an incident command system from FEMA. The important thing to remember is that this is a suggested structure for how an emergency can be organized. Our incident command structure was based on position and expertise. The acting supervisory collections manager served as the incident commander, the liaison between the entire response, senior leadership, and the greater NMAI and SI community. The operations and response coordinator, hi, covered the planning and logistics blocks, working in conjunction with shift leaders, administration, and the incident commander to plan the phases of the emergency response, ensure that tasks were completed, ensure that people and collections remain safe, and ensure that supplies were coming in. Shift leaders were trained primarily from collections, registration, and conservation staff who were a part of the core response team. Their primary tasks were to serve as shift safety officer, document all progress at the end of each shift, and lead freezer rotations. Registration staff served as the documentation specialist for object tracking and barcoding. Data was constantly updated in our CMS EMU and checked and rechecked to ensure objects were correctly located as they moved from home shelf to freezer and back. When you're moving over 5,000 objects, this is the expertise that you lean on. Team members could be anyone in the museum willing to help and be trained. Pullers worked through a printed inventory to check off objects removed for isolation. Wrappers isolated the objects in polyethylene secured with heat sealing or packing tape. Rotators filled in where needed and ensured all objects were labeled with their catalog numbers. At certain points, some of these tasks were reserved for staff with collections handling experience for safety reasons. Eventually, we transitioned to more inspecting than wrapping and added this category to team member roles and responsibilities. So this is our phased response. We maintained the mitigation period at the top because this is our IPM plan. Implementing and supporting these policies and procedures successfully mitigated potential pest infestations for over 10 years. Inspect and, and assess comprise the next two phases. This correlates to the prepare period from the previous chart. You'll notice assess is starred. That's because you will continue to assess and reassess. One key difference between a pest emergency and other types is that pests keep multiplying, keep moving and keep eating. The threat of another hot zone on is ongoing until pests are completely eliminated. Flexibility and adaptability are crucial skills to have. Phase three and four, salvage and monitor, correlate to the response period. You may find additional hot zones during your monitor phase, and you may need to reverse and dive into another small scale response before proceeding to the recovery period. Monitoring during and after salvage is essential prior to beginning the final recovery period. So what do these phases look like for us and how can you use them? Your inspection phase is your identification phase. Your main goal is to find the source and identify the pest. You will strategically deploy a team to perform hands-on inspections and document where you inspect. This phase may take half a day and may take a week. NMAI staff rallied a team of 12 to identify the hot zones in the collections. By day three, we knew where the infestation was centered. Next, you will conduct two assessments. First, assess your collection. How many objects are actively infested? How many objects uh, are actively infested and what does that mean? Agree on how you will scale your response. Do you pull just the infested object or do you pull the surrounding objects too? How many objects may become infested? Determine if you pull the arrows with the feathered fletchling ends or focus on objects that are more than 25% keratin and monitor the rest. Is the infestation contained to a floor, a room, a cabinet? What are the sizes of the objects? Can you safely move them? How do we get the oversized objects down to the freezer? It's not easy to move a nine foot painted buffalo hide when it's wrapped. <laughs> Initially, we answer these questions within two days, but remember this step will happen continuously as it did for us. Once you have all those questions answered, you will assess your resources. What resources are available now and what do you need? Staff, <laughs> establish your roles and responsibilities. Harness the skill sets and expertise available to you. Fill out the incident command structure. Document your station workflows and post them so that staff know what they need to do. Phase your staff recruitment, beginning with a core team of collections, registration, and conservation staff 
allowed us to test our workflows and improve our systems. Reaching out to other departments after procedures were solidified, reduced confusion, and helped when the core team was fatigued, which happened fast. <laughs> Assess your supplies and your funding. What is immediately available and where is it? Take the time to gather those tools. What do you need to make this a successful response? And who is responsible for ordering, inventorying, and securing the funds? Establish these roles early on. What mechanisms for isolation or treatment do you have? And how will you safely isolate the infested collections? Do you have access to freezers and toxic treatment bubbles? Do you have adequate space for these treatments in your house? How will you safely move people and objects in between these spaces? Agree upon definitions. Make a glossary. At NMAI, we agreed active infestations included any object that had a live or dead adult moth, visible larva, or heavily localized piles of frass. Anything that looked like this poor bunny blanket immediately received a red dot to indicate the infestation was active. Everyone calls the aisles and compactors something differently. Everyone has different names for different tools. Creating a glossary now is something you can do so that you have ready at hand when the bugs strike. Finally, find a space for sharing documentation, schedules, and workflows. Archive previous templates no longer used for different phases because your schedules and methods are going to change. Quick stats for us. We had a core team of 25 that rotated on a daily or weekly basis, depending on their schedules. In total, over 50 NMAI staff provided direct support across 15 departments and five SI units. Thousands of feet of plastic tubing, bags, and sheeting, 125 multi-tier carts, yes, I counted, five heat sealers, three wrapping stations, three freezers, and one round of anoxic treatment. You're ready to respond. For a pest infestation, NMAI staff formed two responses. We had an immediate response that prioritized what is actively infested. We documented the catalog number, the date pulled, the date frozen, the object location after each movement and original home location. This was referred to as our triage response. And it was a three day frenzy pulling 227 objects for immediate isolation and freezing. As additional actively infested objects were found during salvage, they jumped the freezer line for immediate treatment. Then we had a proactive response. We strategically isolated and froze the surrounding collections that we knew will be infested or may already be infested with unseen eggs or larvae. We followed the same documentation standards and in total we froze over 5,500 objects in four months. An important goal of the monitoring phase is to achieve a documented clean slate. You know when a bug is new because it wasn't there last week when you checked. This is why it's so important to inspect everything, even if it's on a different floor in a different room. Inspect other areas to make sure no pests have found their way to new food sources. Strategically document these additional inspections. Increase trap checks to identify new hot zones developing. Reinspect the collections to find that hot zone. Reassess and return to the response plan if one does. In all phases, you are also cleaning. Pests love dust. And all that moving around stirs it up, as you can see. In every role and responsibility for keeping space tidy and weekly cleaning, we are still in the monitoring phase, going on two months now, because we are still seeing occasional moths and pheromone traps. Many staff have returned to their pre-emergency jobs, but we still share duties in inspecting objects, checking traps, and housekeeping. Oh. Our next step is recovery, and we are working out what this will look like in the near future. We know we will be removing objects from isolation, cleaning objects, documenting their conditions, and reshelving them after the triage or proactive response. This is where I get to plug that we're hiring two contractors for two years. Come see me if you want a job. <laughs> so, some quick tips for success. First and foremost, have an IPM plan. It is the easiest thing to do to make sure you stay in the happy mitigation bubble. Second, make sure what you did or how you did it is maintained for the next time, because there will be a next time. We get no reprieve with climate change. They don't die anymore. Have lessons learned meetings and generate a report from that. It is crucial. Third, get everyone involved. 
We hosted an all staff meeting live from the emergency site to spread the word. We even made a list of tasks for those without collections experience, help purchase supplies, vacuum. Everybody can do that, right? Take meeting notes, restock supplies, or write a blog post. And finally, self care. You cannot respond to emergency if you are not taking care of you. Make it fun, blast the music, host contests. We had monthly moth pun themes and have fun lunches and good luck. Thank you. Definitely uh, time for questions. Oh, time for questions. Questions? You don't get to ask questions. Yes. That is a very good question. Um, what comes to mind immediately are sensitive collections. And we did consult with several different tribal members who essentially said the same thing, better be safe than sorry, that they understood that our anoxic treatment or our freezing treatment um, was for the safety and security of the object. Um, but pretty much anything can get frozen or have the CO2 sucked out of it, so yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, was there trap checking for other types of pests while this process was going on? Yes, we do have dermestid traps. Um, they're little bait pellets. Um, they're not as big of a pain, though, as moths. Um, they definitely were not checked during this emergency. Um, yeah, I think one of our one of our trap checkers just left. Um, yeah, we were increasing pheromone traps as we were finding new hot zones. Pheromone traps, for those of you that don't know, they have a certain radius. And if you put too many in one location, like you're just going to confuse them. Um, so we were strategic in where we were placing things. Um, but yeah, those are really the only two traps that we have. Stephanie? What did you learn um, <laughs> through doing this that you, that you didn't know beforehand? Like something about like IPM or your personal skills um that's a good question what did i learn i learned that i can do it yeah. <laughs> um which you know it seems really scary you learn about emergency response and what to do and how to do it and are you going to like step up to the plate when the time comes um but yeah you actually can do it you have the tools necessary you have the training um one thing on the job i learned was do not ever pull an object without writing down its home location. <laughs> My registrars hate me for that. <laughs> um, question here. So why didn't the objects come in that you chose to not uh, Those were actually frozen. So they were okay. wrapped, they were sealed, the air was squeezed out as much as possible. Right. And so then, yeah, we really, we made use of every tool we had. So right. while things did not have to necessarily go through anoxic treatment, right. the bubble was available and we took it because we didn't want to string this emergency out any longer than it had to be. Yeah. Any other questions? So four months. Yes. Okay. From, from initial discovery to getting the monitoring teams up and running, how long is that time period? 24 hours. Oh, okay. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sleep that night. Yeah. <laughs> 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 